about taking this pension vote, excuse me, this, the, um, this, this borrowing, this delayed payment. I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of school here because there's a lot of information I think uh, that, you know, there's a lot of uh, serious conversation uh, with this governor and him keeping his word on some of uh, the programs that um, he's asking for us to give him, to give him sole power of, you know, this money. That's, that's pretty big for us and we want to make sure that he keeps his word. At least I certainly do. What's been his main message so far? Well, his main message is sort of what, what our party stands for. Services and uh, taking advantage of uh, an opportunity for us to pay vendors who have, I mean, we're up to six billion dollars in accounts payable. That's huge. So um, I'm willing to support this measure to make sure vendors get paid, so we can have these services for our schools, our human services, so our child care programs are fully funded, and that we close this impasse. That's the real contention. Uh, with some other members who don't think that the barring, uh, that the barring. One year and, and sort of delaying, not a pension holiday, delaying payment is a problem. Um, we have to get ourselves out of this rut. We only have very limited options here, very few options. Um, but now is the time for us to act and be responsible and take the hard vote. None of us want to sort of further put us in a debt situation. And I think um, you know we were, we're leaders, and, and so we have to do the heavy lifting and act like leaders. Can you talk about tax increase? That has not been a, a source of, of discussion. I'm very surprised. And so most of it seems that the agenda is pushing towards the barring of the extra $4 billion and delaying the pension payment. What so thought is there that Republicans are going to have to take part in doing that heavy lifting? There's no, we need 71 votes. There's no way in the world that we can move this thing forward without all hands on deck. You know, they have to put skin in the game. It's as simple as that. This is a problem that was created by all of us collectively over the years. So we collectively have to make tough choices in this tough time for all citizens. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue the way I see it. I think that um, you know, men and women in here have to stand up and make the tough choices and not look at the political quote unquote consequences that everyone is sort of trying to um, potentially hide behind. That's what's expected. We're not expected to close schools. We're not expected to close mental health facilities. But we're expected to deliver services to our most vulnerable people and not be four billion dollars in the red and paying vendors who are doing us a service in the state. I mean, that's absolutely ludicrous. You know, not-for-profit organizations closing their doors, laying off people. That impacts our residents directly. And so we have to man the hell up and do the right thing and come up with the necessary funding in short order to save the citizens here in the state. Has there been discussion on how close you are to having 71 votes for the borrowing? I can't answer that. Tom Cross probably has a, have a couple of questions. Maybe they, maybe some, you know, there are a lot of Republicans who are not coming back. So uh, we need everyone's help. We need people's leadership. We don't need any excuses, any political excuses are just not acceptable.